Make it clear for me. So who are accountants? But if you become an accountant, who are you? Uh, accountant. Uh, maybe it is a bank account. Yeah, an accountant handles money, right? Buchhalter, yes. uh, right, in German or Russian. Someone who manages accounts. And we also have this wonderful phrase in English, you'll be held accountable. So, Vlad, if, um, if you don't do your homework, maybe for three weeks, yeah. I'll say that's your choice, but you'll be held accountable at the end. What, what does that mean, you'll be held accountable? How about you explain that, Vlad? Maybe, uh, no, uh, I know the phrase, uh, I will take in, into account. <laughs> yeah, so tell me, but tell me about that phrase. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's a choice, but we will draw some conclusions and uh, uh, we'll yeah very nice uh, we'll we act as we want ah yeah so you'll be held accountable means you're responsible right we'll draw yeah. some conclusions yeah. uh, there might be some repercussions uh, Aliona help me understand this um, cartoon what 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 does this mean what's the deeper meaning Aliona uh, it can make it about maybe a funny discussion as with Russia uh, with some of our Europeans uh, to say that uh, these are uh, our politicians, some of our politicians, but uh, we change uh, some in some um, degree because uh, Politicians from the list uh, who uh, were um, participants uh, who have uh, accounts in uh, uh, foreign events and uh, don't have uh, such accounts and uh, property. Yeah, not, so not gonna, all of course. No, just some, right? A very select list um, that we are going to put some sanctions on. And Aliona, tell me, in this cartoon, who looks stronger, Putin or Obama? Who is stronger in this cartoon, Aliona? Economic and uh, uh, supporting from the other uh, governments and so on. But um, I may uh, tell or discuss about uh, um, is it right or is it wrong? Some behavior of Russia, you say, and so on, but uh, not about who's wrong because I'm not the serious Right, I remember. So, yeah, and so in the cartoon, just in the cartoon here on the screen. Vladimir Putin is in the big tank, right? And there's tiny little Obama behind him, waving a sign. And, and, and Putin has his shirt on, that's it, right? Um, one criticism in the West is that Putin is very strong. Putin is a man of action. And that Obama is not taking any action um, that's very substantial. And all he's doing is saying, we're going to take your money or we'll hold you accountable. But he's not really being seen as somebody who is strong as Putin is. And this is just one criticism of Obama, right? So in every political situation, there are many viewpoints. Yeah, and many conservatives, especially in the United States, right, 
So Obama is a Democrat. He is um, more liberal. Many conservatives in the United States, those who are more conservative, are saying Obama is not very strong. He is not standing up to Putin um, in this situation. So many cartoons uh, make light of that. Professor Smith, I'm just curious, honestly, um, from that from that standpoint, what what do the conservatives want him to do? <laughs> honestly, I, I'm just at a loss. What would you have him do? You know, what what are they saying on on that end? Um, on Fox News, right? So we should we should uh, explain Fox, Fox News. Um, Fox News is a television channel that is very conservative. So many opponents of Obama um, watch or appear on Fox News. It's a television channel. Um, they would say, put more weapons in the Baltics, um, put more military in Eastern Europe, very Siloviki, uh, uh, right? This, these are folks who are very hawkish um, on Obama. So what we might do is um, for next week, maybe I can bring a clip from Fox News uh, to let everybody think about that from different viewpoints in the West. Maybe to counter that, we could try to find something that's got the opposite as well. I know, right, we'll, I know we'll, a lot we'll of people find. think that we're, that we're wanting to start a war, for example, you know, a lot of this yeah. stuff. So we'll, we'll find some Rachel Maddow. <laughs> 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 well, Professor Storm, I will turn the class over to you since you're going to be accountable for this class. We'll, uh, let, you, uh, <laughs> we'll let you take it over. <laughs> That's really, I, that's, always, that's interesting. In the chat we were talking about, um, we were talking about portrayals of politicians and comics and how sometimes we feel a little bit of sting when we see something that sometimes such comics can almost offend us in some way, you know? Yeah. Um, and yet, I assured them, as they all know, we see so many of these things about our own every day. And if I'm an Obama supporter, which I am, <laughs> I I am then. Uh, Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will just go ahead and tell you that. But differences in opinions are perfectly fine. I'm more than happy to discuss different sides of an issue. But um, so sometimes those cartoons sting a little bit when we when we see things like that. But we have to be able to take it and discuss it, right? And there's always some important aspect of public opinion. In those cartoons, there's something we always something to be discussed. So, what was this here? Ah, today <laughs> we have another controversial subject: <laughs> science, science and religion. I have here the, the science verses, but it's not necessarily as if it's a battle. But that's my question to you. We're not talking today about is it right to be religious. Does God exist? We're not talking about that. You can have your own your own views on this, and it's fine. But this is something that uh, is often debated in American society. What's the role of science? What's the role of religion? And can you ever reconcile your beliefs? Can you be relig Can you be religious? And can you also be um, an analytically minded person. Can you be a scientist and be a devout Catholic, for example? That's the question. <clears throat> so these are really just discussion questions for all of you. I'd like to hear from. I'd like to hear your opinions on this. So we could start at the top of the list here with our science and religion friends or foes. You can think about science and religion in personal life or in public life and society, so you can, you, can, you can talk about it in in overall society or in personal life. It's up to you and how you think about this question. But let's start with Aliona at the top of the, the name list. What is your opinion? Do you think science and religion are friends or foes, or are they both? Is there a mixture of the two? Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm Christian, but I respect, respect science and uh, I have a political uh, mind uh, as I believe because I'm a student of uh, science. Um, I think um, faith should be uh, because it uses uh, uh, strength uh, to evil and so on, but uh, uh, people uh, should understand that the uh, Great, very well said, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely asking about your opinion, she did it. Really nice job on that. Irina, can you tell us? Mm-hmm. I cannot be objective in this matter because uh, I am a metaist uh, and I think that science and religion are false. I can't explain it, it's my opinion because I don't like religion mm-hmm. and I think that. Uh, um the no. I, <laughs> I really can't explain mm, in English maybe uh, it's um uh, usually yes the word in English usually in, Mutually? And mutually, yes. Things, science and religion. Oh, uh, mutually exclusive, do you mean? Yes, as I can write. It means, that, it means that you either believe one or the other. You think that? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big phrase, mutually exclusive. Yeah. Right. Can I be a Democrat and a Republican at the same time? No, you or, can't. And uh, right. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, 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 if you believe that uh, uh, our Earth uh, was born uh, in the result of a big uh, bang, bang, the big yeah. bang. Mm-hmm. you the can. Bang in the same time, you can't believe that uh, they are, they got uh, did it. I, I can see. Yeah, that's typical. And then on the other hand, um, like Aljona mentioned, science doesn't tell us everything yet. Yet. That's, that's the, 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 the task of science, right? To explain. Why, what we are, why we're here, how we came to be here, but we're still learning. And so we haven't answered all the questions yet. And for some people, religion fills this gap, for some. Um, Constantine, are you there with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yes, yes. So did you hear the topic, the topic yeah, being yeah, science yeah. and religion? Yeah, so what do you think? What do you think? Are science and religion mutually exclusive? Are they friends or are they foes? Uh, I think uh, they are they're not enemy, at least. Our knowledge is uh, so small that we can't um, uh, explicate uh, many things, uh, especially Mm, I don't know the, the origin, the origin. The origin. Mm, origins. Uh, yeah, uh, the origin of the world, the origin of the uh, humankind, and uh, many, many, many 
other questions. So uh, the region uh, complete the, the science and some, sometimes science complete the uh, whole region. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult. There are questions that, that we can't answer using both, right? So they're complementary. You think they are complementary. They complement one another. Complementary. Okay. I'm sorry? Uh, in my mind, maybe religion and the science um, have different purposes and uh, all uh, uh, matter is in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Maybe for different purposes. Although on some questions, they coincide, right? Science also asks, how did the earth come to be? And religion doesn't necessarily ask. It tells us, but some of the questions or the issues are the same, right? And so this is it's such such an important topic in American society, for sure. Um, Nastya, let's hear from you. What do you think about science and religion? Maybe I will repeat, but um, I think that uh, science and religion uh, are more close than friends because of um, many things today we can explain by uh, by science. Um, and I think that now is the time of science, not religion. Uh, maybe in, uh, in Russian. Russian. In the past? Yes. Maybe in the past uh, uh, was the science of religion because people, uh, if people uh, can't uh, explain something, they uh, uh, can, they just can do it with, um, by religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we can't explain something, sometimes we turn to religion. Or what's what's interesting for me is, for example, explaining or coping with death, for example, it's so difficult. Somebody you love dies and you think, okay, I don't want to believe that they're just gone. I don't want to believe that. Or I don't want to tell that to my children, right? So I'm going to believe that there's something more after. I'm just giving an example. I'm not talking about my own. I don't believe, but in a sense, it gives us comfort. Comfort. Um, Vlad, you can help us with the next question here. Do you agree or do you disagree with the statement? The more you know, the less you believe. Uh, um, I'm mostly, I think I agree. You agree? And yeah. so can you can you explain the meaning of this this phrase and why you agree with it? Because uh, from my personal opinion, the more I read uh, uh, some things about religion, the more question I have and uh, my belief uh, um, very doubt, doubtful. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say it. Yeah. It's like the more educated a person becomes. Some yeah. people would say the more more education you receive, the more knowledge that you obtain, the less you are able to believe in something blindly. The less able you are to believe in something without seeing it. And that's that's um, the difference between analytical or factual, for example, and intuitive. Someone with an intuitive mind or an intuitive nature can believe something internally. They can, it's, it's very internal, right? You can believe without seeing. You believe without seeing. And analytical or sort of factual, you need to see. You need proof. You need proof. You don't just believe. You need to know. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what they're yeah. talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to hear from all of you um, what you, how you think you are as a person. Do you think that you're more of an analytical person or you have more, more of an intuitive mind? I'd like to hear just about, about yourself. Vlad, you can start and we'll go back up the list. Um, no, I can't just believe without any reasons. I need something to 
it's based on my belief, something, uh, and, and some ground mm -hmm. that uh, I can, uh, cause, you know, uh, a few months ago, I really start, uh, start to uh, interested in questions of religion and science, uh, the origin of the uh, world. And I really start to um, make some my personal research about religion because uh, uh, because I I really don't know in what things uh, I should believe. Uh, uh, formal, I'm a uh, Christian, but at the same time I support uh, the point of view of science. I believe in. Uh, evolution theory. At the same time, I believe that there is something uh, higher, it's uh, kind of some supernatural power that uh, we still don't uh, discover, because uh, the humanity is very young. Yeah. At the same time, I share the Indian uh, uh, some Indian uh, aspects of religion, for example, with karma. I believe in karma as the energy uh, that every people uh, have. It's like a personal energy of uh, every person. Uh, I believe in this. Yeah, and also uh, we have we have sort of a saying that you get what you give. Yeah. It's really reflective of karma. You get what you give. So what you put in, yeah. the kind of energy that you send into the world, is what you're going to get yeah. back. You get what you get. And yeah. When I read the uh, Holy Bible, I I can't see. Um, no, I didn't get uh, some answers that uh, I could uh, see in uh, science or in another religious. Uh, also, I confused about God. Uh, who is this and how he should look like? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the general idea of God as uh, only one person is true. Uh, why it can be, I don't know, some something spread everywhere, like uh, like energy of ev uh, everywhere in everything uh, and yeah you're right these are all things we don't know but yes, the, the yes. bible is very specific but again we don't know science hasn't been able to prove everything that's been in the bible let's put it that way not yet anyway so i mean without getting too controversial on yeah. the subject because since we don't know how everyone in this class feels um that's why but, but yeah you definitely hit the subject matter of the debate very well. It's and, a huge and, issue. Yeah, and you know, if you if you will ask some press about uh, uh, what is the evidence of uh, that uh, God is real, and uh, most of them told you read it in the Bible, but Bible was written by people, mm -hmm. not God. And how do you really can sure? Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. Um, so let's go back to the less controversial question. Yeah. The less controversial question of how your mind works. Would you say your your mind is more analytical, or are you more of an intuitive sort of person? Nastya, what do you think about yourself? Can you repeat, please? Do you consider yourself to be more analytical or more intuitive? More analytical. Or more intuitive. Ah. Do you see on the screen? Okay. Yes, yes. Now I see. Mm. I think both. Because uh, sometimes uh, uh, we need uh, in uh, intuitive, and sometimes uh, we need in uh, um, uh, analytical. Because uh, um, because of. Uh, a lot of people we uh, um, see in by emotions, and uh, many things we see by uh, by 
on the mind uh, I can come from some yeah you by your feeling or you or you could say by intuition intuition Constantine, what about you? Yeah, sorry, Constantine, it's difficult to hear you. Can you put your microphone closer to your mouth? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Perfect. Uh, okay, what, sir. What, do, what do you want to hear about the more you know, the less you believe? Or yeah, you can, tell me, you can tell me if you agree or if you disagree and if you consider yourself to be more analytical or... About the more you know and the less you believe. Uh, could you see my... Uh, no, no, no. Can you see my... No. No, I can't. Just a minute. So, this is a spot. Yes. Mm, for example, the spot, the area of the spot is um, the area of our knowledge. And uh, the, area, the area of the screen is. is uh, mm, uh, I don't know if it's knowledge at all. Unseen, we might call it. Uh, and uh, the board between the screen area and uh, um, sports area is our question, or it's uh, area of our, uh, I don't know, ignorance, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, the more you know, the more you know, so the sport, the area of the sport is more, mm -hmm. and uh, there are more and more questions because uh, the board is uh, is bigger. So the more you know, the more have I, the more question I have. Mm -hmm. I think so. And uh, I don't know why it can be connected with, with uh, believing, with the religion. The more you know, the more I want to know. I think so. And uh, the next about uh, intuitive and uh, and uh, analytics, yeah? Analytical. Yeah, do you have an analytical or an intuitive mind? Uh huh. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the situation. Sometimes I'm analytic. Sometimes I rely on my intuition. It depends on the situation. Yeah, I I agree. It seems also. For example, I mean, during the last class we talked a bit about um, not in this last class, a different class, about a mother's intuition. And so I would say, for example, in some parts of private life. I rely upon my intuition in some parts of private life, you know. If I'm singing something or if I'm writing music, then I go with my intuition what I think would be best or caring for my son or knowing if something's wrong with my son. Then I might rely upon my intuition. But when I'm at work, when I'm doing research, when I'm doing these sorts of things, I am purely analytical. So I sort of like you, Constantine. I think it depends on the situation. Um, Irina, what do you think? Uh, I trust uh, my intuition uh, in everyday things, uh, like friendship, maybe weather, and uh, dealing with uh, another people. But with, if we are talking about uh, serious things like uh, economy, politics, uh, history, law, I will uh, resolve analytics, I think, and, with, uh, and as for religion, I'm not an atheist, uh, and I believe something like reality of interpreting, but uh, I'm plus, uh, I'm plus to physics, physics, mm -hmm. physics, physics, yes, uh, but not to missionaries and also uh, I don't understand many things in physics, but uh, I believe to science. 
and uh, I believe uh, in uh, analytics. I think. Uh, yeah, so you're you're also kind of uh, both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of both. What about you, Eliana? Um. Um. I uh, agree with you for the expert uh, I need the religion in order to believe something that has uh, that the uh, find the people who the uh, happy after uh, all this uh, that the uh, trust is in, in this world and so on. And then somebody cares on once uh, um, when I need uh, some um, a supernatural power in order to help me in something when. Uh, Somebody will, uh, for example, but as, uh, but if I uh, solve daily or science questions, problems, to, uh, I don't think about religion. I try and I try uh, to find the uh, answers to which uh, are based on some explaining, on some real explaining, not uh, something that uh, I. Uh, only can believe uh, that I really can see, that I really can understand how it, um, uh, how these things uh, happen uh, and so on. And uh, I think uh, that um, real explain explanation should be in our daily, not on the science uh, scientific life, because uh, people uh, may. Uh, uh, may uh, uh, have uh, unright uh, wrong, may have my wrong uh, understanding of this world uh, if uh, they only believe and have maybe even some problems in this society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think you guys all did a really great job. I like hearing your opinions for this. It's very, very good. And using some difficult words <laughs> as well in terms of origins and evolution and these sorts of things. Um, so right here I have a list of some contemporary issues in society that fuel the debate on science and religion, especially in the United States. This is, again, like I said, within the United States. I can't speak to necessarily Russia, but um, what I'd like to do is someone to tell me, I'd like each of you to tell me a little about one of these topics and to tell me why it's controversial, why the issue is controversial. What is so controversial between science and religion in these particular um, issues? So you can choose, because I don't know who is comfortable talking about stem cell research. Stem cell research. Um, so if someone is more knowledgeable about this, you can volunteer. So we've got stem cell research, designer babies, Education, as in in schools, primary schools, abortion or availability of contraception, for example, um, birth control or different sorts of things, or actual procedure of abortion, and physician-assisted suicide, also uh, known as euthanasia. So you don't have to tell me your necessary, your personal opinions. If you definitely don't have to, you can say this is controversial because scientists say that. Scientists say this, yet religious individuals argue that this is wrong because. So um, let's just think about it quickly. Who would like to say a little bit about stem cell research and why it's controversial? We have a scientist in here. <laughs> Aliana? <laughs> Stem cell research, and what is uh, stem cell? Someone would have to probably translate that. Vlad, do you know stem cell? Stem cell? Maybe Vlad can tell us a little bit more because apparently he's, he does stealth some stem cell research every day. Yes. Okay, so tell us about it. Oh my God. Stem um, cell research. 
No, I I really don't know exactly about procedure. <laughs> How it uh, looks like uh, uh, from point of view uh, science and biology. Uh, but so the overall, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about cell stem research. All I know is that, and per, actually, Professor Smith, maybe you could and tell us a little bit about it. Right, so <clears throat> to use Carly's idea, maybe we can say there are two sides to the debate. From the scientific point of view, right, from the scientist's point of view, this is research on a type of cells that tell us a lot about biology and about chemistry and about DNA. But from a religious point of view, many people believe it is wrong to use stem cells in research because you have to get stem cells from fetuses, from unborn babies. And they would see this as tinkering with biology, tinkering with creation. So I made two statements. From the scientific point of view, blah, 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 blah. From the religious point of view, blah, 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 blah. And so I put differing views on the same subject. Did everybody see what I did? So maybe somebody could try that with designer babies. Uh, well, let like me to... try. Let me okay. try. Do you want to do uh, designer babies, Constantine? Uh, and uh, the term about stem cell research is over. Yeah. Why don't you? Why don't you? You could do the same one if you want it. Yes. You can. You can. You can talk about stem cell research. Try it. Try it. I think about uh, stem cell research is uh, two points of view. The first, the um, Almighty, the human, uh, mankind, mankind is uh, Almighty. We can create it. We human, we can create it in in the in the bulb. I don't know, Pradilka or Kolba. Bulb. I'm just going to yeah. guess. We can't create it, create it in a future. Look, it's a, it's a bulb or a bulb. Oh, it's something. Oh, OK. And uh, the next uh, uh, opposite point of view, um, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, harmful for religion. It harms the religion. It, uh, mm, I, I don't know about uh, uh, negates or speaks negatively. Yeah, it speaks negatively about uh, uh, go about uh, God poverty, and uh, so there, there are bad conclusions. Con oh no, consequence. Consequence. And, uh, yeah. Uh, consequences and uh, in uh, I think in uh, in many countries I heard that it, uh, President Bush prohibited the stem cell uh, not stem cell research but uh, to make uh, design the babies DNA maybe DNA research. Um, yeah, and uh, some prohibition there are in US, oh, sorry, in Russia, and um, the um, common point of view of the scientists and religion is uh, that uh, the consequences are unknown, and uh, the consequences may be very, very bad. So, um, both, both sides. I, I would say, uh, think that uh, the research can be, uh, the research can exist, but uh, um, it uh, should uh, 
be very we might say like judiciously, I don't know. Yeah. We, one word we might use would be judiciously, right? We need to be very careful and judging. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we must be very careful in this aspect. Okay. Very nice. Yes, excellent, excellent, Constantine. Very good. And who else is going to, uh, Aliana, were you going to say another bit about designer babies and about why why it's right from one perspective and wrong from another. Um, about the babies, my last time. Yeah. As for the babies, um, I think uh, it's very important question. If uh, parents uh, don't uh, can't uh, have a child uh, themselves, why not? It will, will make uh, them happy about it. Uh, there is there is a convention uh, modern tendency sorry uh, there is a modern tendency in this world that uh, uh, rich people uh, for example a child uh, for child uh, don't, don't want uh, to um, have baby because of uh, uh, because uh, they um, uh, woman I mean I mean. Uh, they afraid um, of uh, bad uh, fever, uh, shape of their uh, fever, body uh, after it uh, and so on. But uh, I, in this case, uh, I think that it's uh, unnormal and uh, it's uh, really difficult because uh, evolution works uh, of our people and we. Um, can to uh, go uh, in a ways of development which uh, are, um, which uh, which is uh, normal and um, for human um, for human uh, children uh, to uh, have uh, real normal parents if their parents can do that of course and uh, it's uh, well, mind of children maybe when uh, they um, know it, uh, especially, especially in a very uh, early uh, age. Yeah, so for everybody who's not familiar with the designer baby subject, just think if you, to think that if, um, that science could do this for us, if we had enough money, we could engineer our children. Say, I want to have a boy. I want him to have these traits and to design a child. And from the religious from the religious perspective, it's wrong from the religious perspective because that's not our job, right? Some people would say that's God's job. We don't we don't get to choose what kind of child we have. So from that perspective, it's wrong. And from the scientific perspective, it's look how great this is. Look at this technology that we have. Look what we are able to do with our knowledge. Yeah. Um, let's go on to abortion. And Irina, you mentioned you wanted to talk about that. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, this uh, question is uh, controversial because the science, um, because the uh, point uh, of view the science uh, uh, science says that uh, you have the legal right uh, to choose uh, your natural you have uh, the natural right uh, to choose uh, whether you want to have children or not uh you are ready to be a mother or father or not uh religion um, believes uh that abortion is a murder mm -hmm. and uh, god the god sends uh to human the child it's a big presence of um, of the god of the sky and uh, you can't um, you can't uh, choose uh, 
do you want to be parents or not? Uh, and I know many, um, many, I don't know, in English, uh, many dysfunctional families uh, uh, with uh, in uh, the parents uh, which are drug addicts, alcoholics, and they're finan financially in in involvement, yes? Yes, in uh, Yes. Uh, and uh, their dependency, uh, they didn't want to have the children, and um, now they have babies, and they don't like them, uh, they don't care about them. And uh, I think that uh, religion isn't the uh, truth in this question, because uh, these uh, children, they are unhappy and uh, they couldn't uh, choose their life and uh, this life is very hard. I really think that uh, it's really controversial question and many of my friends uh, think not like me. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely I, controversial question. You're right. Uh, so, is it uh, is it also very controversial in Russia? Because it's definitely very controversial in America. I know that uh, uh, we learn it uh, in universities that uh, in different states of USA uh, they have a, a different uh, legislation with uh, different. Uh, um different law and uh, in one state you can uh, take the person and another it's uh, like it's something like a merger and you can uh, i don't know in english how to be this um you have the prison mm. Uh, now, it's uh, criminal. It could be criminalized. Uh, yes, uh, it's a criminal action. I, I would say, Professor Smith, um, you can let me know if you disagree with any of this. It is definitely a state by state issue. Some states allow it, some, some states don't. Or if they do allow it, sometimes the limitations will be, there will be limitations saying that it must be before the woman is 20 weeks along in her, price, uh, in her um, pregnancy, for example. So there are limitations. Sometimes perhaps it's not allowed. Or, um, but that doesn't mean that if, if um, I'm a woman living in a state that does not allow an abortion, I can still go to another state. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, so, if she, she will come back in her state, uh, uh, they can um, no. Nope. They she will not be arrested for that. As long, I mean, if she if it is legal in another state, if it's you know no. not <laughs> not done by by someone in the back alley, for example, with no medical skills, then she's not going to be arrested. If she goes to I don't yeah know the the is. owner of the clinic, the owner of the medical location. Uh, is the one who might have legal action against him or her. Mm -hmm. And in Texas, where I live, is one of the states that's very conservative. Um, so they are trying to close many of the clinics in Texas uh, um, where this could happen. Yeah, but, but at least we can say that the woman will not be jailed for getting yes. an abortion yes, if it's not allowed correct. in her state. She, she won't be jailed. Um, the clinics themselves have to follow specific rules um, as well. But yeah, um, thank you for that, Edie. That you did a uh, yeah, thorough, very nice, thorough a very difficult subject. It is very difficult. Yeah, we could have we could spend another entire class at least discussing each of these separate <laughs> issues. That's why we're just touching upon these now to talk about where science meets religion in these contemporary issues. And I believe, um, Vlad, you wanted to talk about euthanasia and so did Nastya. So let's actually start with Nastya and then we'll let Vlad.
finish with this one. So Nastya, can you tell us where okay. what's the what's the scientific perspective and what's the religious perspective when it comes to euthanasia? Uh, I am super the right for euthanasia. I think when people um, are dying from youth and they suffer, it's awful and uh, um, close people suffer too. I know this because uh, my grandmother uh, was dying from cancer before our eyes and it was very difficult. And if, uh, um, if we haven't hope for healing, I think we, uh, we can do it. But uh, for religion's point, um, miracles are happened. And uh, even we uh, have no hope, maybe miracle <laughs> will happen. Mm -hmm. And also, at least, um, so I was raised, I was raised in the Catholic Church, for example. And at least I can say in the Catholic Church that suicide is a huge sin. So if someone commits suicide, the traditional belief is that he or she will go to hell. <laughs> Regardless of something or not, and again, I don't agree with that. That that's that's the official view. Um, so that's from the religious point of view. That could that that person who asks for the physician assisted suicide, perhaps that has some bearing upon his or her soul. What happens after death, and the physician or the person who actually performs this knows what happens, supposedly, from the religious perspective to them after they die. Uh, Vlad? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you wanted to say something about euthanasia? Yes. Uh, we researched this question in our classes uh, many times. Uh, in, a, in a perspective uh, of law or mo morality. And we shouldn't forget that uh, there is uh, uh, discussions about euthanasia, not about only euthanasia, good or evil. There is uh, some discussions about uh, what kind of euthanasia, good or bad. Because there is two types of euthanasia, active and passive. Active uh, euthanasia is uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, active euthanasia is uh, when you administrated the, the drug personally and uh, let people die. Uh, and passive euthanasia is uh, if you just off the equipment which uh, support. Uh, the life of the uh, people, and uh, some uh, of states support uh, euthanasia in general. Some of them uh, support just active euthanasia. Some of them uh, prohibit at all. And uh, of course, uh, there is a very controversial question because uh, the main argument is uh, that. Uh, from religion, uh, it's uh, life is a supreme good, and only God uh, can give you life and uh, take it. Mm. So there is a question around uh, this uh, mm -hmm. position. Um, yes. But. Uh, mm, Personally, I I support euthanasia. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we we shouldn't uh, prohibit uh, because uh, we should divide. Uh, no, there is a. Uh, I think there is line uh, where you uh, you enjoy your life and you suffer, and there is line where you have more suffer than. Uh, uh, just normal uh, life, like uh, like uh, ordinary people. Mm 
And if uh, the whole uh, of your life is just suffering and uh, you want to stop it, why not? Mm -hmm. Then it would be your choice, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, another very difficult subject. So, um, actually, the main intersection of science and religion that we were going to discuss in class this week and in class next week is specifically um, what we are taught in American schools about the origin, the origins of mankind and of Earth, because there are very different perspectives on this. The two main perspe perspectives are creationism and evolution. So does everyone see this slide, whiteboard two? Right? Yeah, yeah I have the chart. I okay, so I'd like us to just recap on the main differences between creation, creationism, and evolution. For example, what does creationism tell us about how the earth came to exist? Or how many years ago? How was it? How many days did it take to create it? When did man come about? Does anybody know this? Sorry, Constantine, I didn't hear. Uh, do you mean the religion point of view? Or? Yes, because from creationism, it's the religious point of view. Uh, religion says nothing about how many years ago the world was created. Mm -hmm. They only said that uh, first there was, there was nothing, and then uh, in some days, uh, God created uh, the earth, the animals, and the mankind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and I think, at least to my knowledge, it was six days, but it could be different. I don't, I'm not sure. Sorry, it sorry. It's six days, isn't it? Six days, not seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, seven, yeah. Seven yeah. Day of rest. Yeah. Just one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, Sunday. Right, yes. so to uh, rest, so the seven days. Yes, so according to the Bible, the world was created in six days. Mankind was created on which day? I don't remember. Sixth day was created on the sixth day. And first there was Adam, then there was Eve, right? And that's the story yeah. about how the earth came into, came into existence, how men came to exist. And actually, um, creationists have calculated at least um, a branch, an important branch of um, creationism. They assert, they claim that the world is 6,500 years old. The Bible didn't say this. Creationists did. Creationists calculated this based upon um, the birth and the death of Christ and these sorts of things. So according to this branch of creationism, the world is 6,500 years old. What about, um, also we should say that evolution doesn't tell us how the earth was created. That's a separate theory, so we can't say that. But evolution does tell us how mankind came to exist. What does evolution tell us about that? Anyone? Thank Sorry? Uh, sorry, <laughs> the sound is kind of fuzzy. Yeah, over millions of years, and uh, how did how did men and women come to exist? Think Charles Darwin. Sorry, millions. Well, the world. One the world, million. Being, not, not millions, sorry, Billion. but the world, Billion. billions, billions, yes. Yeah. billions, yes, billions of years old. And I don't know that evolution tells us when, I don't, I, I don't remember the specifics, when men and women came into the picture, but it tells us how. Eight, usually eight to 10,000 years, something like that. Eight to 10,000 years? Yeah. 
And uh, so how did men and women come to exist according to evolution? Irina? There's the, the verb evolve that comes from this. Uh, what, evolved. Which was the evil? What? Sorry? Oh, which question was? How did, how did man come to exist according to evolution? In evolution. Uh-huh. Mm, I know the theory, theory of Darwin only. Yep. Oh, okay. Something like was a uh, five uh, maybe or six studies of human uh, evolution and uh, from <laughs> the human is the result of monkey's evolution. Is the theory yeah, done? Uh, Exactly, yeah. So man evolved from lesser animals and that the closest relative genetically to to a human is a primate, monkeys, right? So th those are the, the key differences. And it doesn't tell us, Professor Smith, does evolution tell us how old the, that's not evolution that tells us how old the Earth is. That's something else. Usually geology, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's what we can learn from that anyway. And my next question is listed, and it's for all of you to answer, is what were you taught? Were you taught creationism? Were you taught evolution? And is this different from your parents or your grandparents? And is this, are you satisfied with the education that you received on this subject? Or do you think it's inadequate? Let's start with Vlad at the bottom of the list, the name list. Yes. Uh huh. What were you taught in school about the origins of the Earth and mankind? Of course, evolution. But it's much more logical. Mm -hmm. More logical. Yeah. And so, are you satisfied? Do you think that we received a well-rounded education on the origins? But, uh, you know, there is uh, no less questions uh, about theory of evolution, because most of people uh, talking about uh, Darwin, about uh, monkeys, but uh, Darwin just initiated uh, this theory. He was the first man who uh, stand opposed the religion. And uh, he just made a big contribution to science, but uh, through the how much? Uh, uh, 100 years or maybe more, uh, there is a, a science made a big uh, develop. You know, uh, many of science, uh, scientists today. Uh, uh, they abandoned the idea that man uh, uh, evolved from apes. Uh, they found uh, a lot of evidence that we have a common uh, uh, things with uh, other uh, animals. Uh, I heard, for example, that we have uh, about 95 uh, genetic uh, match with uh, bananas. <laughs> Uh, I I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but uh, I, I'm not scientist. <laughs> but uh, you know there is a lot of branches, uh, a lot of ideas and theories into the only one uh, theory of evolution, and we should uh, take into account every of this uh, theory to make uh, some conclusions. Because uh, Darwin's theory just uh, just the first of many. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. And Nasta, what were you taught? Uh, excuse me, but I don't know what does this word mean. Taught? taught? Yeah. Oh, just past tense for to teach. You know, what someone 
someone teaches you what they taught you in the past, so what you were taught in school, what you learned in school. Uh, 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 what I think that uh, should be taught. Uh, what you were taught in school. Were you taught evolution or were you taught creationism? Um, evolution, of course. Mm -hmm. It might seem so obvious, but I ask because you'll see soon, perhaps next week, you will see that the situation in America is very different. Um, I won't get into it too much, but it's not as not as obvious a question in in America. Uh, uh, sorry, Carly. Mm -hmm. uh, I I forgot to say that uh, honestly, we taught uh, three. Uh, the theory of uh, origins of the earth and mm -hmm. uh, I talked about evolution theory but of course uh, we spend some time for uh, creationism theory and uh, there is uh, one more theory it was uh, intelligent design uh, let me think it's uh, about uh, about the aliens. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. you know. Yeah, but it's, uh, it sounds uh, ridiculous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one that, that I haven't heard of. Um, it was in a, in a different class that a student mentioned that, but <laughs> they were taught about that. That's something that they, I, at least I think in most American schools, they don't teach us that. Maybe. <laughs> I could be wrong, though. Okay, so Nastya, you said you were taught evolution, yeah. right? Uh -huh, evolution. And were you taught any creationism as well? Or was it introduced in school? What? When you speak so quickly, I can't understand. Them, but oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm more than happy to repeat. It could also be my microphone. Um, were you taught creationism too? So the religious theory? Or just evolution. Uh, I can't That's okay. Um, we'll we'll go ahead and move on. We have a bit of background noise too. But Constantine, what about you? Mm. What uh, what system I taught in the school? Yeah. What did what were you taught about the origins of? Of course, evolution. I think that. Uh, now there were people in Russia and uh, in Europe are taught uh, evolution to a theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, uh, we have a subject, I don't know, um, the basis of religion, maybe. That's no religion. Sometimes um, there are a proposition to to establish this uh, subject in our school. Mm. But uh, this lesson, I think they should teach about creationism, and uh, they try to uh, connect evolution and creationism. Uh -huh. Yeah. But uh, me and my parents, of course, and even, even my grandparents, they all were taught uh, with uh, all the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And then let's finish up before we run out of time. I'd still like to hear from you, Irina, and then Agnona. Yeah. About what you were taught in school. <laughs> Charles Darwin, Monty, Bananas, and the last charity, and the other thing. Um, but um, at university, I was taught in um, different and different theories in uh, such subjects as uh, philosophy. Um, our uh, professor is a very unusual sentimental woman. Uh, she may uh, tell tell about not only about Christianism and the uh, ways of mankind uh, and earth and so on. She may uh, or even explain uh, 
white cover is red. And uh, of course, creationism uh, uh, was a very, was very easy thing for sure. And we started it. Mm -hmm. And Irina, can you tell us what you were taught? I can talk something new. <laughs> I have a classic education, classic person education with uh, classic theories uh, of uh, human uh, creation. Uh, and uh, it uh, was without religion. Uh, without religion. Context. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you will see the reason. Uh, you, will, you will see the reason that I asked all of you this question. If you see this um, this figure, and then we'll wrap up. But I want to give you one more thought to think about when, before we finish. Can you explain, please? I can Oh, no, I'm just, we're wrapping up the lesson now. I'm telling you why I asked everyone these questions. Mm -hmm. So if you can see this creationist view of human origins in America. Mm -hmm. Please make make the picture smaller. Make the picture smaller, smaller percentage. And look at this. 46% of Americans believe God created humans in their present form at one time within the last 10,000 years. 46%. 32% believe humans formed over millions of years from less advanced forms, so that's like evolution, but with God's guidance. So there's still God. 15% believe in pure evolution. Humans formed over millions of years from less advanced forms, but God had no part in the process. So this tells us that views in America of creationism and evolution are very complicated. And we will finish this theme next week. We will learn more about what is taught in American schools about the origins of Earth and mankind, mostly mankind. Are you surprised by this? Yes. Yes, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. Yes. Yes, yes. And so next week we will talk more about, like I said, what students learn in school about really this. Research. I'm sorry? Pardon. Is it real research in American school? Sorry, Aliona, what? Is it real research in research? Is it real research? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is from a Gallup poll from a Gallup poll from a polling organization. Very well respected organization. Yes, yes. But we will, it's interesting, yes. We will talk more about this next week. It's a very, very, very complicated issue, so we need one more class to finish this. And Professor Smith and I will conclude the subject next week. But you have a lot to think about. <laughs> Does anyone have questions? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question. Yes? Um, it is not uh, uh, in the, I don't in this topic. Uh, do you remember we discussed the, um, I don't remember, the video with the American song, uh, America, yes. America, got, uh, Yes, America the Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, America the Beautiful. Uh, the sentence, God shed uh, his grace on thee. Mm -hmm. Why uh, the letter S is absent in the word shed? Oh, it shouldn't be absent. God shed his grace on thee. Where is it Perhaps absent? Perhaps it was a mistake. It's a mistake in uh, God sheds his grace on God me. shed. It may he shed. Yeah, but so it's actually a subjunctive. It does subjunctive. No, his, his grace, not may, maybe. The second, yeah. second uh, 
sentence. There is a, I don't know, God shed his grace on thee, and then... And um, crown thy good with crown brotherhood. Crown thy good with brotherhood. Mm -hmm. The second sentence is, uh, may God uh, crown us. And the first, it's, uh, I think, it's ask because God shed his, his grace. Or if it's uh, uh, ask and God shed, uh, God shed um, your grace. Well, it's definitely the perception of God as a man, right? So it's saying, may he give you grace. May he give you his grace. And it's actually an imperative uh -huh. form. It, it's a, it's a, an archaic imperative in, in English. Right, so I'd say, Carly, shed your grace. Uh, Carly, give me the book. Yeah, yeah. Carly, shed your grace. Right, so it's a, it's a third-person imperative, but it's an archaic. Shed your grace. Right. If we, see, we say, Carly, mm, I don't know. Yeah. So it isn't a mistake. Uh, there is no... No. Right. No, it's an archaic form of the imperative. Okay, okay. And the lyrics are older, so the, the lyrics yeah. were written in the 18th century, I believe. Um, so it's a it's a slightly older form of, of English. You just have to imagine that nowadays there'd be a may before that. May God shed his grace. Yeah, but I was confused with uh, his grace. Yeah. Not your grace, but yeah. his grace. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank always. you very much. Thank you very much. Good question. Good well, to see you all this week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. I will post the homework tomorrow in the blog. Uh, okay, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Have you a good week. See you. You too. Thank you. Thank you for the real interesting topics, really. Very uh, good discussion. Yes. Very interesting. Yes, I heard it. Oh, good. Well, we will continue next week, so let's hope you will continue to be happy. We have some really interesting stuff. Okay, we'll do the Have a good week. Okay. Have a good week. You too. Thank you all. Hey, Carly, I'm going to have to run and do a phone call before somebody leaves, so I'll sure. talk to you on sure. email. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> all right. All right, bye. Bye now. Bye.